a software that looks really similar to Photoshop and it's online and free? Which one you're talking about? Let's do a few challenges in both software, Photoshop and the web-based and free one. Maybe you have already guessed which one it is, if not, stay tuned. Hello and welcome, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. The weather is pretty nice outside, it's just pretty cold. It's around minus one degree Celsius. I'm gonna put the conversion for my American viewers on screen in Fahrenheit. And this morning it was even colder, my computer told me it was around minus eight or something like that. And we had a few days ago a really strong storm, so let's jump in today's video. Maybe you have already guessed which one it is. If not, I'm gonna tell you in a few seconds. So the software I'm talking about is called, drumroll, it's called Photopia. Maybe you have already heard of it. So let's put a screenshot of both programs on screen. It's crazy how similar it looks when you look at Adobe software. Here's a few facts about Photopia. It was released on September the 14th, 2014. And it's crazy that it was developed by only one Ukrainian man. Let's make a few challenges. The first one is going to be to open a PSD file. So let's start with Photoshop. So let's open this file and you will see that in Photoshop it will work flawlessly because I made this thumbnail in Photoshop. So now let's go to Photopia. Here's what it looks like. And then we're going to click on open from computer and then open the same file. And here you can see that it looks the same. So basically both pieces of software did an amazing job opening this PSD file. So now let's jump to our second challenge, which is going to be resizing a layer. So in Photoshop, what you would do is select the layer and then press Ctrl and T. But in a browser, if you press Ctrl and T, it's going to open a new tab. To do that in Photopia, you have to press Alt, Ctrl and T. And here you can see, now we can resize your layer. In Photoshop, as I told you, it's Ctrl and T and then you're ready to resize it. So now for challenge number three, we're going to select a subject and then try content aware scale on both. So let's begin in Photoshop with this one. So open our little file I made for this video. And then we're going to pick out the quick selection tool, then click on select subject, then wait. Photoshop is now done. Now what we are going to do is unlock the layer then go to select and then save selection. Now we're going to give it a name, for example, keyboard key, for example, press on OK. Now we're going to press Ctrl and D to deselect, press the select, press the move tool. Why <laughs> did I say select? I don't know. Now go to edit and then on to content aware scale. Now we're going to pick our keyboard key selection maybe for you it can already be selected so we're going to select it and now if we disable keep the ratio Photoshop should not distort our keyboard key as you can see we can do it both sides so here it works flawlessly now let's do the same in Photopia open it click on file open and now let's open the same file I took something square to do because Photopia does not have that fancy tool called uh, select subject so you have to do it manually if I would take a cup or even something more complex it would take ages to select it so here we are now we have our selection we're going to press on the tick and now we're going to click on select like Photoshop and save selection and here you can see that there is no option like in Photoshop like load selection because you can only save one selection which makes sense because it's a web-based software and now you can edit and then content aware the scale and now if I didn't do something stupid it should work here you can see that it works so now press Ctrl and D. Here Ctrl D works, but for some shortcuts you will have to use Alt. So they are really similar to Photoshop. 
So if you're a Photoshop user, you should know how to use Photopia really fast because it's a really similar software. Now let's jump to our fourth challenge. Here we're going to add a glow around a layer. Here's going to be some text. So we're going to begin with Photopia. So we're going to make some black text. So here you go. And we're going to type text. I know it's really creative. <laughs> so now press on the tick, right click, and then blending options. Click on outer glow, then click on it. And then we're going to pick out the color. Then we're going to take some kind of blue. Here you go, and then we're going to copy the color code so we can use the same one in Photoshop. And then press on OK. And then we're going to use opacity 100%, spread we're going to use 20%, size 20 as well. And we're going to do the same in Photoshop. So now press on OK. And I don't know why it didn't work. Ah, I know why. I surely forgot to change the blending mode. So let's go back. Let's. Ah, yeah, here it is. It was the blending mode. So now it works. So now we can see that's how it looks like in Photopia. Now let's jump over to Photoshop. Open it. So now let's type the same text. Text. It's a different font because I pretty like this font. It's my thumbnail font. So now we're going to right click here. Then blending options. Here you can see that it's the same path to do it. Add the glow, turn it on. Then what we're going to do is going, we're going to use 20%, 20% here, and then we're going to enter the same hex code or color code, and then press on OK. And if we take a look at Photoshop's result and at Photopia's result, I would say, if I, wait, I'm going to put it side by side, here we go. And I would say that Photoshop did a nicer job. And here, even here, you can see that Photoshop is better at finding the contours of the text. So I'm going to give this one to Photoshop. I prefer it how Photoshop did it. So how well the blending modes work in Photoshop compared to Photopia? Those are these ones over here. So let's put it back to normal. And then first what we're going to do is move it over our first layer. And then we're going to begin with, which one should we take first? What we're going to go with overlay first. And then what we're going to do is the same thing in Photopia. Make it full screen again. Use it, oh, that's a bit too much. You can see if I press on Alt and the scroll wheel, it's going to work as well. So. Let's move it again over the delete. Now we're going to click here and then let's choose overlay. And let's take a look. Let's put it side by side with Photoshop. So let's put this one here and then Photoshop here. And how did they do? Actually, the results are pretty similar. So let's try another one. So make it smaller and then open it again. There we go. And now let's try something a bit different. Maybe the linear light. Here you go. Now let's use the same one on Photoshop. Where is linear light? Here we go. And I have to say, they look pretty similar. So to conclude, we can see that Photopia is way more limited than Photoshop, but it's a free application and it's an amazing software if you want to open some PSD files or edit some RAWs or some other files like some Illustrator files. Those are the AI files and it's really good at doing that. So it's still a nice software. Photoshop, on the other hand, is around 12 euros a month. I'm gonna put the dollar price on screen for my American viewers in the photo package. And if we take Photoshop alone, I think it's around 25 euros or something like that in the area. If you're looking for a software that does some simple stuff and you can use it on your phone because it's web-based, so it's like having a Photoshop on your phone. You can do most of the easy stuff like selecting or something like that. So here for the mobile aspect, if you don't have an iPad that has Photoshop on it, 
I would go with Photopia because it's pretty nice. If you want to check Photopia for yourself, I'm gonna put a link in the video description below. I hope you liked this video, don't forget to like so it can spread to more people. A subscription would be amazing. I hope to see you in the next one and take care of yourself.